This could get messy. Hello, welcome to this video. Um, it's gonna go rather holy, and a lot of sanding, a lot of noise, a lot of dust. Um, but I've decided it's time to start piercing as well as coloring. Should be fun. Let's see how we get on. Now I tried with the last video I made to show the whole process and uh, the computer let me down. So let's see if I have any better luck this time. Um, got an axe mince to chuck on with C jaws, little Morse taper carrier with my one Morse taper four drive, four, four prong drive center. So let's get that in. I know I could mount the block, or mount the blank on a screw chuck, but then I have to have a hole in it. This way <coughs> I can be in complete control of the blank and any holes that are in it. So I'll just mount it up between centres, put a bit of vision on. There is a nasty knot right in the middle. Let's just put it roughly about there. Bring up the tail stop. Quite a bowed blank, this one. I think that's about the best I'm going to get. Let's tighten it up. Just see if that spins all right. Yep, okay. Okay, voiceover time. As there was so much noise in the workshop, I couldn't really record the sound at the same time. So here I am cutting the tenon on what will be the front of the bowl, a square-sided tenon rather than a dovetailed one, which then gets mounted in the C jaws on an Axminster chuck, and then I get to work on shaping the bottom. I put a recess in the bottom to turn on the jaws in expansion mode with a little dovetail in it, uh, then define where my foot's going to be and then work on the shaping. An OG shape is what I'm using a lot at the moment, but maybe that'll change, who knows. Nice little shearing cuts to finally um, finish the surface, so reduce the sanding. And then I like to put a bit of texture on the bottom, just to show that it's actually been, been worked, and there's quite a lot of thought gone into it, rather than just, oh, it's the back of the bowl, let's not bother. Uh, burn some rings in and some texture around the outside of the foot as well and then my preferred finish at the moment is chestnut products cut and polish um, so that goes on the back gets sanded off and then we're on to the front now with the front I want to define the rim this is going to be a different one from some of the coloring ones I'm not going for such a wide rim here um, the outside of the rim it was a bit square I like there to be an angle on that which helps to, when you look at the shape in profile to really lift the whole platter. And then um, a curve on the rim. As you can see, it's quite narrower compared to some of the other rims that I've been doing. Um, I like to sort of stop and feel the wood. Sometimes you get a much better sense of any flat spots that way than, than your eye can actually pick up. And then after all that careful work, I brutalize it with drill bits. Uh, one or two of the drill bits were a bit blunt, especially this one. <laughs> that only did one hole. Um, it didn't take that long, but I have speeded up the process so you don't see the drilling of all of the holes. I think the thing that took the longest with this project actually was probably the sanding, but we'll get to that in a moment. Now I wanted there to be more than just a flat rim with holes in, so I was going for a sort of eroded look. So I'm using a... Um, a burr in the Proxon long neck grinder, a uh, red wheel burr. It doesn't cut as nicely as I would like it to. And then I wanted to widen out some of the holes, so using a rotary tool with a sabre um, bit in there. Ideally, I was trying to go for more angle in the holes, but the drilling being done perpendicular to the rim didn't really allow that to happen. And this is what took all the time so much sanding in fact i did so much sanding that my phone wouldn't recognize my fingerprint anymore to unlock my screen anyway i have speeded this up i have cut a lot of it out 
um, because who wants to watch hours and hours of sanding? Oh, well, if we're going to move from hand to power, that's a bit more interest. Woohoo! Uh, yeah, it took a lot of sanding. Bristle brushes as well. Um, I think I over sanded probably. I took away some of the variation that was what I was really aiming for. Then on to a burr cutter. Now the last time I did this was with a Dremel tool that I borrowed from Southdown's Wood Turning Club. This is a rotary tool that I've got myself and the quality of my burr cutter was not nearly as good. So I've ordered some more and I'll be featuring those in later videos and seeing if they're any better and telling you where I got them from if they are. Colour. Well, black rather than colour on this one. Just went for black and gold. Uh, with a little splash of blue coming up later on. I sprayed the back because I wanted to get all of the holes filled with paint and I wasn't being successful with that from the front. Now, not having defined the inner edge of the rim, there was a little bit more work that needed to be done. It looks very uneven at the moment, but once I'd established where the rim was going, I could go back in with the texturing, with the little burr, and uh, get that rim sorted out. And then I thought, wouldn't it be nice to have some interference paint on it, some gold, and by hand, let's put a little spot of gold in every single one of the little holes that I made with the burr cutter. Mm, yeah, that took quite a bit of time as well. I also wanted there to be some gold in the holes, almost as if the, the hole had, had gold removed from it. So I thinned down some of the Joe Sonia iridescent paint with... Um, some uh, I can't remember what they call it flow medium and sprayed inside at some point I thought I've got a bit too much gold a bit too blingy um, so there's always time to refine that and modify that so I did actually tone it down a little bit as you'll see when we get to the final piece and then just a case of turning out the inside of the bowl and again that was um, sanded Sand it to 400 grit and then chestnuts cut and polish was used as the finish on the inside. I also had to remove all the paint from the back of the blank, although this took quite a long time as well. Yeah, here we go with the cut and polish to get the nice finish on the inside. And that finishes up very nicely. I then redid the back because where I'd sanded I'd taken the finish off. Once I'd um, done all the sanding, got all the dust off, it did feel a little bit too garish. So I actually went over it with a little bit of blue spirit stain just to tone down the brightness of the gold a little, make it a little less obvious. And there is my first majorly pierced piece. I think it's actually the very first pierced piece I've done. Um, the back not quite happy there are still a few bits of um, black paint sticking in there okay you can probably pick up I think in the video image some of the places where I haven't managed to get all of the lacquer off now either I do more sanding I leave it or maybe I stain the back but um I haven't decided so that that can wait for another day but the front well, I'm very pleased with the front. Putting the blue over the gold really helped to tone it down, make it a bit less blingy, give it a little bit of subtlety. With gold. Should gold ever be subtle? Hmm. Interesting philosophical point. Anyway, still images coming up. The fact that the rim was narrower on this one has made it a much more usable platter. Um, and I'm really pleased with how it came out. I'm certainly going to do more piercing certainly going to do more texturing, um, certainly going to carry on with new ways of decorating platter rims. Hopefully it'll give you some inspiration and if it's your first time here and you like what you've seen it'd be brilliant if you could subscribe. Okay but for this week that's it so thanks for watching. I wonder if I should drill holes in this one. <laughs>